obviously on the sad news uh, that's come up from Australia with the news of the passing of both Rod Marsh and um, Shane Warne. Um, we are very pleased to be joined by David Bumble Lloyd. And uh, David, you, you must have memories of, of both of these two Australians down the years. Well, very fond memories. And, and it was a, a real shock uh, to hear about Rodney Marsh. And he, he, he battled away. He'd had this um, strong heart attack and he didn't pull through. And then, of course, the news today that, that Shane has passed away. And, you know, that, that's a great mate. We, we, we obviously, we'll talk about his, his cricket and being the best in the world but he would talk about mateship he, he he valued being a friend and he was a very simple lad he would do anything for you very very generous lad he was passionate about his cricket but my goodness he loved life he, he sleep was an inconvenience he didn't like going to sleep he he wanted to get on with life with a night out with him and both of them being uh... One for strong men only. Well, it is, and and for for different reasons. I, I mean, Beefy is legendary that he he could be very very thirsty. <laughs> Beefy could be very very thirsty. Well, Shane Shane wasn't. Shane wouldn't do that. Oh. Um, he, he would. He, he was very crafty when he was out. That he he would have a, a little glass of wine and he put it down and go and get another and put it down. And there's not much that went out of it because because he loved to go around chatting. He liked the chat. He liked the buzz of being around people. And I mentioned he, he, he was so generous. He'd do anything for you, do anything for you and check up on how you are. I think that's really important in a mate who would ring up and say, how are you doing? And he would do that. My memory of him, I, I met him once, funny enough, at Lords uh, at the 100 final last summer. And every time I try and conjure his name up, all I can think of is him with a great big grin on his face. Would that be what he was like uh, in real life? Yeah. Um, what you see is what you got. And he was exactly the same on the cricket field. One of the, Part of his armoury, it's a given that he's the greatest spin bowler that we've ever seen. That's a given. But part of that armoury was clever. He was shrewd. The first thing he wanted to do was get into the batsman's mind so that the batsman starts to play him and not the ball. Now, he loved that battle, that mental battle. But he would also talk to you, you know, he would talk about the times when batsmen had got on top of him. You know, that, that, that is, you get some that they just talk about me, did you remember that great 100 I got and then wickets I got? No, he would talk about the time when a batsman took him to the cleaners. Now, 2005, Kevin Peterson, 158 at the Oval. He took him to the cleaners. Now, he would talk about that warning, about the battle and how he won it. Kevin Peterson won that battle. They were big mates as well. They, they played together at Hampshire, didn't they? So around about that time as well. Yeah, well, he captained Hampshire. He had a stand named after him. He, Shane left his mark everywhere he went. And it, it is a great sadness for the cricket world. But he wouldn't want that sadness. He just wouldn't. And I know him inside out. He would want to celebrate. He wouldn't want any morbid thoughts. He would want people to go on a jamboree and just enjoy themselves. Yeah. It's funny. I've been looking back today. It's been played a few times, the ball of the century. <laughs> um, and I remember that, your beloved old Trafford. Um, and at, at that time, it was kind of Gatting's resurgence and he, there were cries for him to be come back, coming back in the England team and he, he came back in on some really strong county form and then he gets served that ball up. Incredible. Well, Gat, I can tell you, he's still bemused. <laughs> he's, still, he, he's, still, he's still, after all this time, hasn't come to terms with it. Um, and and Warney, Warney would chuckle and giggle about that, but, you know, the serious side of that, 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 that delivery announced him on the world stage you know it made everybody in the cricketing world at international levels sit up that's you know the terrifying the, batsman everywhere yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely that, that's exactly what he does it's like a bush telegraph did you see that delivery that that kid bowled well he, he bowled a lot more like that but you know his best delivery was the one out of the front of his hand that didn't spin at all that was his best delivery and he loved bowling it and that was so difficult to do. That is, 
That is the most difficult delivery in cricket. The leg spinner's ball out of the front of the hand that doesn't spin. Yeah, you see, I, I, I used to be a leg spinner and I used to bowl loads of deliveries that didn't turn. Yeah. But they didn't come out the front of my hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he loved the ashes as well. He was one of those, I know all Australians say that, but he was a real someone that every time the ashes came around, you could see the excitement and the buzz. And you mentioned about 2005. I mean, he took 40 wickets in that series. I know yeah. Australia lost and a lot of noise about England, yeah. but he took 40 wickets, didn't he? Well, again, you, you can just look back and there are comparisons with the recent Ashes where, you know, we, Jimmy Anderson and Stuart Broad are two of the greatest bowlers that we've ever had. And they were taking wickets, but the batsman couldn't bat. And that's exactly why Warren, with 40 wickets, he, you, you should win a series hand down, but the batsman couldn't bat because England were bowling so well that England had a, a super attack, one of the best attacks that I've ever seen from an England team. But he enjoyed that battle. Just think about that. Kevin Peterson, 158 at the Oval, when he got the better of him, Peterson, but he, he kept coming. Shane Warren kept coming. There's plenty of times when a, a player, a great player, will say, well, perhaps not today, I'll do it tomorrow. He kept coming at him. And that's, that's what makes champions, in my view. He was an absolute champion of the game. Very generous to young cricketers. They're not all like that. He, he was generous to young kids. And he'd spend time signing autographs, putting everybody in a line, having a chat. You know, he would, he, he would want for us all to remember that side of him. Yeah, of course we know how great a bowler he was, but generous to a fault. And then the big what if was that he threw his hat into the ring um, to be the next England coach. Um, do, you think, <laughs> do you think he was really serious about that? And what, what, would he have been good? What, would he have made a change? It, it'd have been fantastic. Um, he, he really would. And he'll throw his hat into the ring for anything, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> I, I can do that. I'll do that. But he, if he did, he would be so committed. He had a fantastic cricket brain. You know, th there have been some wonderful cricketers who just do it naturally and don't really know what, what they've done. But he, he was very astute on a cricket field. He would see things five and ten overs ahead. And he always what the, the great regret that he wasn't the official Australian captain. And the other thing, I'll let you into a secret. He he loved the battle, he, he, just the battle. And and sometimes you get an Australian player who will talk about the baggy green, the baggy green this, the baggy green that. He wouldn't have any of that. Didn't have any of that. Let's get to work. Let's get on with this. No matter <laughs> what we wear, let's get on with it. It's a sad loss. It really is. Um, and, and of course, the day started with the oh. equally sad news of, uh, of, of Rod Marsh, who would have been um, one of your, from, from a generation before, for people that know Shane Warne, um, Rod Marsh was, was an equally fiery Australian from, uh, from the 70s and uh, that great Lillian Thompson era of Australian cricket. They had a real axis, uh, didn't they? There's Thompson and Lily. Uh, Rodney Marsh, the two chapels, they've got a real access, uh, access of a team there. And Australia, all Australia will be devastated by that loss too. And he was a, a, a lad who, who wanted to impart knowledge. Rodney Marsh became England Academy coach. He was an England selector and he would always want to give knowledge to younger cricketers. He was a proper cricket man, lovely, lovely bloke, belligerent batsman. He was right in that Australian mould that you'd, you'd get him coming in at number eight, Ian Healy, um, Adam Gilchrist, that type of cricketer that can be dangerous and take the game from you. Uh, but a, a, a really, a man who cared, he cared deeply about the game. It's very sad and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a huge loss. Now, um, you're up in Yorkshire. Um, what are your thoughts turning to England just about this upcoming uh, series in the Caribbean, always in the past, been a great occasion. Um, how do you think it's going to go? Well, I, I think England will find it very difficult. And it, every team that goes to the West Indies will find it difficult. Uh, they, they play really well, in my opinion, the West Indies on home turf. The pitches will be a problem to England. The pitches will be very slow. They won't have any pace in them. You've got to have a lot of patience. And West Indies will play to those strengths. They, 
and may not be the force that they were, um, but there will still be a handful in their home ground. I wish I was there. I wish I could go out and watch that cricket because it is one of the great places to go and watch cricket and to see these young cricketers who, who are doing battle. And I think England will struggle. If they get anything from this, it'll be a bonus. Think back to the days when you were there, and I know you like to um, socialise and get amongst it wherever you are, um, but the West Indies is one of those great places where you can go down to a bar, have a drink, and then the locals will engage in some of the most knowledgeable cricket anywhere in the world. Um, that, to me, would be one of the things that I'd miss if I was, uh, was not going out there. Well, I'm not going out there, but um, I'm sure you've done that in the past and uh, in Barbados and places like that. It, it, it's the, the, one of the friendliest places. You can just go in there and they, they would talk about cricket, yarn about cricket, play a bit of music. And it, it was just good fun. It's a, a terrific place uh, to go and watch. And Island Hop, you're going from different countries. You know, everybody talks about the West Indies. They are different countries. And so you're going from one place to another. They kick off in Antigua, which is a beautiful place. At the Viv Richards ground, Viv will be out there. <laughs> strutting his stuff as he always does and you know you'll finish up in Barbados and you know, there's no better place to be it's such a, a lovely place have a great time I'm not sure whether Barmy Army will be out there I'm sure there'll, there'll be a contingent that gets out and support but but that is, it, it is one when you talk about the tours that is one of the great tours and the, I mean I'm going off piste here the other great tour for, for me is I haven't been for years which is really sad is Pakistan. I, I used to love going to Pakistan. I thought it was a great place to tour. People were so friendly and cricket mad, of course. And you've just got to muck in. You've got to join in and get get down with it. You've got to get downtown and, and, and have a go. Your old mate Gow has been out there covering the PSL, though, so he, he's been getting stuck in, do you think? <laughs> has he really? I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah, I yeah didn't know commentating. That. What, on, what, on one day cricket? Yeah, T20. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, that you, you, no, you're telling me, so I don't, I'm not having that. <laughs> it's, it's true. It's true. David got T20 cricket. Yeah, yeah. Really? Well, <laughs> well there we go. If we do it 100 <laughs> next. <laughs> it's, it's like me going to the opera. <laughs> <laughs> Well, lovely to see you with such a big smile on your face. Um, we miss you immensely, but we're also really thankful, David, for your support of us on this humble little show. Um, you've been a big part of our success um, and always great to keep in touch, and uh, we wish you all the best. Well, that's great. I've, I've got a new gig, actually, which I'm very excited about, and it will interest you guys. Tell us. That Lancashire, Lancashire Cricket Club are going to have Lancashire TV. And um, it's, it, it's a labour of love. I, Lancashire has been my life. And I'm going to be lead commentator for a number of the matches, which I, it's, it's what part of the streaming service, uh, service. And, you know, I'm really excited about having a go. Oh, fantastic. Is that on YouTube or um, via the Lancashire website? It, well, you, you'll, you'll know more about it than me. <laughs> but we, we, did it, we did it last year during COVID when it was, it was streamed. And Sky went and took the stream, but put commentary on it. And, and I worked on it. And the, the production company were from Salford University. They were young, young kids. And they were absolutely brilliant. It was fantastic. Really good coverage. Um, and so I've, I've jumped in on that, and I'm looking forward to it. Well, if, you, uh, if Lancashire player sticks and you want some good, balanced co-commentators... That are completely unbiased, then you know where to come. You're the man, and and, and are we playing? Are we, I don't know whether I travel. I'm, I think it might just be at Old Trafford. I, I'm not sure I can get to, to the uh, People's Republic of Chelmsford. <laughs> well, we can get up there. <laughs> we can get up <laughs> the M6. Not sure we'd have, I'm not sure we'd have you. <laughs> <laughs> not sure I'd blame you. <laughs> I'll never. I mean, but you've probably stopped recording now. I'll never forget that on one of them T Twenty night games, we we were at one end of the ground and we were on scaffolding with one of these precarious green hooks on top of it, 
and the spectators were trying to shake us down. <laughs> <laughs> Just shaking the scaffolding. And I thought, this is it. I'm going to drop it. I'm going to drop to the earth here. <laughs> Chelmsford. Well, you love, you're, you're, you're famous in Chelmsford, aren't you, for hopping over the fence and... Uh... Was that the night Graham Napier was whacking it about? That Graham Napier got 150, 153 or whatever. Yeah. And that, that bloke, he set his dog on me. I tried <laughs> to get the bloke, I think bloke, that, that ferocious dog appeared. Yeah. <laughs> How are your dogs, by the way? They're all right. They've just barked at the minute. I've got two new puppies. Oh. Yeah. They've got two, two new pups. Yeah. I've got a whippet here who um, needs attention all the time. Yeah, uh, my minor fox terriers. Yeah. Oh, lovely. <laughs> well, well, we'll let you get on and go and uh, sort your dogs out. Right, I'm going up to the pub. Well, that's what I'm <laughs> going to do as well. Actually, I was planning on heading out the door, but uh, I've yeah. uh, I've put that off half now because uh, there's no better reason to delay it than talking to you, David. So, well, you'd uh, be very kind. Yeah, I wish you'd have been in better circumstances. Yes, it's a sad day, but. Um, Anyway, Lancashire TV, we've got that to look forward to. So every cloud has a silver lining. Well, let's uh, yeah, and, and the weather needs to improve. It's pouring down. Yeah, same here, same here. Yeah. All right. Okay, then. Good stuff. Take care. Bye, my lads. <laughs>